Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 Welcome everybody to Esports in 30. I'm Brody Moore and this is my homie Drew Face today. It's Combo Breaker Day. We had Street Fighter, we had Tekken, and of course we had some amazing Mortal Kombat action. Drew, you were there in the flesh breakdown. How hype it was. This is my favorite event of all, of all year. Of all year. Every year I go and watch Combo Breaker. Every year I drive down and I watch Combo Breaker. I love it. This year it was bigger than ever. It was like a little mini evil dude. It is the only event in the FGC circuit that manages to combine esports while still maintaining that Smack TV kind of feel. Oh, you that, love that, that underground FGC feel, you FGC know what I'm saying? Feel, yeah. yeah, it's the only event that I went to that feels like that. And that's why I love it every year. I love it, baby. Shouts to Rick, baby. I love you, dog. <laughs> well, then, why don't we get some video evidence of how hype it actually was, shall we? Here's some highlights from the absolutely epic MK11 event at Combo Breaker. This Waz needs to be careful. He needs to be aware of the threat that is Big D. He gets the teleport on Waz, and that's gonna be Big D. Taking a top eight here at Combo Breaker. He's gonna do max damage. Are we gonna see a crushing blow? Yes, yes we, we will. Are. Damage over time armor. Are we gonna see Fox in the loser's bracket? Oh, yes we are, and that is it. Chop Chop for the win, and Tweety cannot believe it. Punching the ground with excitement. How do you change Six seconds, Scorpion five, down? Can you change Scorpion four. down? He went in and wasn't punished! Is it enough? One second, and score! With few seconds remaining, take it game number three. We got ourselves a match. Ooh, he was just patient. Didn't want to take any risks at all. He's away. Oh my goodness. And that was Are you risk. kidding me? 100 well, we damage. Is Scar going to be able to pull us off? Do, are we going? This is from Foxy. Only 100 health is going to tell. No breakaway from Foxy. Any hit out is going to be it. And it's going to be Scar. Three to two. Ship is a big deal. Look at the patience. Everybody's video. Okay, let's throw. Needs to get back in. Oh He's my done it goodness. again, and it's the boot to the face. The what? heel comes for the heel up on the stage. The man loves to throw. Yeah, he was explaining to me how to play Kung Lao. He was like, yeah, just use basically three moves, and you're fine. Oh, he rolled oh, through. The Sonic Fox special. Jump kick, it's better great Fox. There's that back to Juju once again. again. Absolutely pistol whip for this man to death. Break it with the rifle from down. Oh, oh, he blew his hat off. Game one for Sonic Fox. Beautiful pickup, Sonic Fox knocking on the door. He's in control. The grab comes. That should do it somehow. Sonic Fox stayed alive and he ends up moving on and loser's side. No defensive bar now for Dragon. There is no escape. Is he gonna end with the bus slam? That's the round for Samish. There's plenty of time for the fuck for a comeback right now. But he may not get it. There's no breakaway. Samish is gonna get close on this one. He already used the crush, keep in mind. There you go, the keep up. Samij takes it. Got him. Is Wait. that enough? No, no offensive part of him will find that for Switch and Music. Four and four from downtown. It's big trouble now for Tweety. Who really can't get touched. Trying to move through the punish was there again. Scar, as in almost every situation throughout the last three games, was ready. Wow, he even falls block. What? Oh my. Not actually. Are you serious? serious? That was absolutely ludicrous. Can we end this right now? The siphon. <laughs> what? Into the oh. throw. Sonic Fox is going to take it from first three yellow over Samish. Are you kidding me? Sonic Fox is in here. Oh, oh my goodness. Dash punch crushing blow. It's all Sonic Fox and he's coasting through the blow up. And Scar has the life lead. Oh, he's in oh, there again. In. These are unbreakable tools. Is that it? Nah, quite. Two more health. And what? He literally waited. 
if he finds the right combo on Sonic Box knows it. So Sonic Box now is playing a little slower of a game. He dashed forward! Oh, he got the grab scar so close, so close! Sonic Box got and too it. heavy and it's Scar! Scar takes it! Combo Breaker 2019, Mortal Kombat 11 champion, Scar! And a huge congrats to Scar for that epic grand final win over Sonic Fox. To help us recap an amazing combo breaker, we got the one and only Katana Prime. Join us. What's up, dude? What's popping, homie? I'm, 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 I'm just the guy. I promise you. Just, you know, just a legendary just a, guy. Uh, you were the hypest dude. The you were the hypest dude in that room <laughs> that weekend, dog. I was there with you, dog. You were okay, the hypest dude in that room. You're also the prettiest, though. Uh, but you're I, definitely I the hypest up, in that so room. Stop making me feel so good. Plus, I'm just, you know. <laughs> All right. Please. I'm smiling and they can see it. <laughs> and they can, no smiling. All right, well, let's get serious and let's talk about what we saw there. The grand finals looked like a continuation of World Combat 10. It was Scar versus Sonic Fox, and in the end, Scar walked away as the combo breaker champ. KP, these guys are no strangers to each other. Uh, like, they have a lot of experience with each other. How was Scar able to strike first blood in MK11? It's crazy you mentioned that because I, I spoke about this myself just tweeting out. Um, definitively, those guys were definitely one and two. And there's not a single person on this planet who knows Sonic Fox better in game mm -hmm. than Scar. Yeah. Um, behind scenes, over the years, plenty of times, Sonic has stressed at tournaments like, like Scar. Like, if I can just be Scar, like, I'll win. Yeah. And he had the game plan. Also, being in the winner's bracket is it, just such a massive advantage. You know, you have a set to get. Mm -hmm. And what better way than to be able to download a man and, and finish him before he even gets a chance to fight back. Scar just, he just knows Sonic too well. And uh, he definitely has the upper hand early. He also took him out at some of the time. So it, it wasn't much of a surprise, but to do it consistently, Scar's on another level. Yeah. I mean, near the end of MKX, like Scar and Sonic were number one and two respectively. Uh, was this Grand Finals a showcase of their expertise and comfort in the NRS games? Ah, oh, I think without question, we all know that Sonic's like number one all time. Yeah, um, overall. And, yeah. and Scar, because of his demeanor, like he's just cool. He just shows up, gets the job done. You see him in his hat. He's like in work mode every single yeah. second. People know how good he is, but because he isn't overly vocal, he's not the guy who people just, oh yeah, Scar, Scar, Scar. But. He definitely is that good. Um, already a legend in my books. And, and when you sit down and talk to him, he understands the game and, and breaks down Mortal Kombat specifically. Like, it's not just NRS. Like, he was great at Injustice, don't get me wrong. But, like, his heart and soul is in Mortal Kombat. So when you get to sit down with Scar and see him pick apart the pieces of the engine and know what works and why it does, he's just... Man, there has to be a, a, a definitive word for to, to explain his. We have to make up a new word in the dictionary yeah. for him. Right? But whatever it is, Scar has it, hundred percent. That's brilliant. Well, let's let's talk about Sonic Fox too. Uh, just his, kind of his run through the tournament. Um, like we need to mention his adaption here. And his set against me, she went down 0-2 and then pulled out Scarlet. Was anybody going to be ready for this? I wasn't ready. I lost so much money on that. I lost so much money on that, dude. Oh my god. You know what's crazy? Um, I, we I know Scar uh, Sonic's been playing Scarlet, but we hadn't seen it in action tournament wise. But there was a special uh, exhibition, in Florida versus Texas. We might get into that a little bit later. All right. At the end of it, when we called New York out. Sonic immediately sat down to play Samiz just for whatever reason. Yeah. Nobody was paying attention, but apparently he used Scarlet in that. Okay. So there was a second of download opportunity, mm. and I think Sonic took advantage of it. He was already thinking ahead to the next day. He had to be. There's just no other way. So, I mean, like, whenever he switched to Scarlet after, after yes. picking Jackie and going down 0-2, mm -hmm. what? What advantages did he get for switching to Scarlet? Because I saw a lot of heavy, heavy zoning from Scarlet, and it really gave Samija a lot of trouble, especially yes. against the fan-made Katana. Mm -hmm. Scar Scarlet's going to win the majority of, uh, well, not the majority, all of the trades um, in terms of her set of projectiles and full screen. She gets a knockdown from the tongue. And, like, Katana's not necessarily a full-blown zoner in this game. Uh, she's more of, like, a hybrid, you know, stagger, and the fans are decent. But... At full screen, like, Scarlet is just an issue. And with the ability to make all of her strings safe with her her blood and uh, the amplified versions giving her health back, it was just so much of an uphill battle that it was hard for Samish to keep a life lead. And that's after the big struggle to get in in the first place. So Sonic just, he played the matchup out in his head. He had enough belief in the character. And, I mean, you were there. You saw what happened. Yeah, it, was just it wasn't happy about that. And, and, and it got... And your Canadian dollars just cry. <laughs>
They're not yeah. worth much anyways, don't worry. I was, I was Florida <laughs> boys that entire weekend, man. I was Florida boys that entire weekend. I bet on Florida all day. It was like, it was not right working until, out that time. Right up until top eight. Go ahead. Well, let's, well I mean, it, it wasn't the only time he was switching it up, too. I mean, against Foxy Gramp, he was trailing with Aaron Black, so he switched to Jackie. How difficult, like, I feel like that's just part of his skill set that gets him so far is his ability to switch. Is that true? Like, is it hard to adapt to so many character switches? Um, I think it's more popular nowadays that a lot of the top players okay. in the modern day NRS games play multiple characters so that these situations don't happen. I think the issue was Foxy switching to Lau threw him off. Mm. You know, we, we all know Foxy for that character for so long, but when it was working and it was a very simple yet effective game plan, Jackie being up close wasn't necessarily all the rage. So going to Aaron Black to try to chew, he's able to play against Lau at all of the ranges on the screen. And a few mistakes here and there from Foxy were, were like the difference for, for Sonic to clutch it out. Uh, the adaptation comes, you know, uh, Foxy's actually won a combo breaker before. So he's no stranger to it. Yes. He, he's taken out Sonic on, on, on different occasions. But it's just more or less matchups because everyone can adapt at that level and everyone has multiple characters in the bag. Do you feel, do you feel like it could have gone another way then if Foxy had a bit more time into the game? Like it's just, is this just early and he doesn't know the matchups then? Is that is that what it came um, down to? I mean, he still played it extremely well. It, it was just a matter of, of getting outplayed at the end of the day for that set, mm -hmm. which it's, it's the first of many to come. MK11 is fresh, and if the skill cap looks this high Already? early on, imagine what's going to happen, you know, as we all... I think a lot of people forget because there's just so much content. The game's only been out a month. Yeah, like, that's true. The game's been out a month, and this is where we are. So, um, I, Fox just got the best of him, and there's a lot more left in the tank. So we'll we'll, we'll see what uh, fate spells for Foxy Grandpa. I'm sure this isn't the last we've seen of him. Absolutely. I mean, like, so, so look, there's there's somebody that got top three that tournament. It was Tweety. Tweety yes. actually managed yeah. to knock Sonic Fox into losers. In Warner's, uh, winner, winner's quarters. Winner's quarters, yeah. But then in losers' final, Sonic Fox is steamrolling 3 0. Was that? Was he actually trolling? Was he trolling? No, was he trying he, to he win the tournament from losers? He was definitely not trolling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was taking right a long road home. Sonic, and he gave me that same work. Um, but the difference being, and, and, and I talk about this a lot, especially when I'm on commentary for top eights, when you get down to the top four, right? And you do losers' quarters, you do winners' finals, losers' finals, grand finals. The person in losers, has a has, they play three sets in a row and if there's any one person in the world that i want to bank all my money on to be as good as possible on a momentum shift you win your losers quarters match and you play losers finals and you play grand finals it's going to be no other than sonic fox of course he was steamrolling after the 3-0 uh comeback against samij like he he just that was it like he was on a mission he couldn't be stopped he takes his revenge very seriously and if you notice sonic rarely pops off when he beat Tweety, he popped off. Oh, he definitely did. Because he remembered did. what happened at Evo last year in Injustice 2. He Absolutely. remembered what happened in the top 24 on the winner's side uh, Saturday you know, morning. It, it, it stuck with him. And when he wants it, I mean, what are you going to do? This is the strongest player mm -hmm. hulking up to, to, to turn up because Tweety is such a formidable opponent and a genuine threat to win any tournament he's been a part of. You know, he won Combo Breaker last year. You know, he got third out of the gate. He He's no stranger to grand finals across the board. And um, I think when Sonic realized, like, all right, this is my chance, I'm also in losers, there's an extra bit of turn up as well. But that, that's what blows my mind too is like because he, he he also I think he won Skullgirls as well got yeah, fourth did. in yes. DBZ like how do you go through so many games and still be focused on the other games to make the adjustments like you just lost against this guy you have to think about what went wrong and then make those adjustments to get that 3-0 like how does he have all these games and thinking about all of them separate like do you think it's just because the, the fighting games are like do you think he could do this with other games too even you, like you is know, he just buddy? a genius I, I, I don't have the answers You're, otherwise you'd be doing it right? <laughs> you know it, it's Things do translate from the game to game, right? But they're mm -hmm. small things. Like let's say if you play like Counter Strike, right? You have like all these shooter fundamentals, but that doesn't necessarily make you good in Overwatch or you know any any other shooter or Call of Duty or what ha whatever have you. But there's fundamental changes that grasp that can help you. Yeah. And his fundamental base is so well that when he picks up a game, he's already better than like majority of the players. Mm -hmm. Now, he also, and this is the part we don't see, Sonic has put in just as much time to these other games. Now, Dragon Ball, he hasn't been doing as much and reflected, he lost. Yeah. Skullgirls, 
he lost early in pools, and then he said as he was going through losers, the more games he got to play, it all started coming back. And when you play a game that you love for so long, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years, it just never goes away. Yeah. And he was able to just, you know, put it all together, but it's shown. We've been all MK11. That works. Again, Skullgirls, he picked it up as he went through losers because his path was longer, so he got more time to adjust and adapt. And in Dragon Ball, which he didn't put as much time, he lost. So, um, it, it takes a very special level of like upper echelon stuff to keep mm-hmm. it PG-13 to be at that level, <laughs> and only a few possess it. You got your Chris G's, you got your Goichi's, you got your Sonics, and, and I don't necessarily have the skill or the expertise to, to break down why they do it so well. That That's a question you'd have to ask him directly. I want to see him play at Smash Brothers at some point. That'd be... Uh, Smash, I mean, Smash is too to hard, man. Smash, Smash, to, to be that good at Smash, you have to, like, only play Smash. It's nah, just that's true, it's that's not going to happen. Well, you're, you're talking different. You're talking about your skill, though, and like you actually did have a pretty good showing, uh, just short of top eight. How do you feel about your MK11 right now? Uh, I was tight initially because cool. fighting game players are the only players who can get 13th out of 800 plus and say we suck. This yeah, is what yeah, we absolutely. Do. Uh, I, if you I know play how you other feel. Games, you, you know it's <laughs> us. But looking back on it, I'm actually like extremely proud. Um, I, I've been starting rough with MK11, adjusting mm-hmm. to the game plan and playing a whole new character. Like, I don't even play Katana as much in tournament. And when I went into the summit of time, I felt like I was a decent to bad player. And I used that opportunity to, like, learn actual hyperbolic time chamber. And within the week and a half from there, I was able to place top 16 at Combo Breaker playing all J. Like, I figured it out. And I'm getting better. And... I also have to keep my mindset straight that online and offline for me personally are just two different games. As good as online is, me mentally, I could never fully check into it because it's just a different experience when that person is breathing next to you, when there's no outside factors, when a crowd is screaming, when a stream is watching. Like, all of that, like, boosts me. And I just... It's great. I got some points on the leaderboard, you know what I'm saying? I got a little bit of gold (laughs) cash. So, uh... Uh, I'm just trying to show that, you know, I mean, I am just a commentator, but nah, I know how that, to you know what you're doing. Come on, man. You don't want <laughs> I that. know how to play this game. So it's it's a fantastic start. I- I'll leave it at that. I- I'm, yeah. I'm proud of the performance. I did choke it up, uh, but I know what to work on. And it was all learning. It was it was all yeah. GG's everywhere and just fantastic experience. Uh, OK, so I'm going to leave this to you guys now because I heard you talking about it before. But uh, there was a 10v10 exhibition, was oh, there not? Yes. Can you break this down right now? Absolutely. All right, so, Definitely 10v10, babe. Florida boys, let's yeah, go. Over the, over the years, as esports came into things, a lot of the regional pride was lost where everybody kind of just started trying to pull for themselves and do their things, which is fine. Do what you do. But being from Florida, I'm extremely proud for where I'm from. And so is Texas, along with Ominous, who's a Jax player from Texas, way oh, back in Mortal Kombat X, <laughs> about three years ago at a tournament, we had a big argument about depth and who had the deeper scene. So we were going to put this together at the end of MKX, but what happened was we could never get enough people at the same tournament. You know, people, you know, school, jobs, families, all of that, you know, real life stuff. Well, we get it. We're all adults, well, most of us. And um, then Injustice 2 came out, and, and we were talking about it. And, and while we love the game, the heart just wasn't there in the community. So right. as soon as they revealed MK11 and all the old heads was like, oh, we're playing. Me and Ominous started again about February. We hyped it up, let it die down, went behind the scenes. Thanks to Rick and, and, and all the guys with us who's our equipment, uh, Arturo for setting it up, for stream the match, Reno, everybody who voted. It started getting real. Oh, yeah, we was, all agreed on the format, on the players. We, we set everything up behind the scenes so it was no nonsense. Bring the money. Come after I was Saturday night, and then the scene took its own thing. People were just betting who and who, who Absolutely. were not even involved looking at the rosters. You got Drew, who's from Canada. You don't know nothing about this. I know nothing. He put his money on Florida, and he knew what. It was extremely hype. No holds barred on commentary. No, um, like, everybody was just talking trash, and it was never personal. It was all about the game. It was the essence of, like, the arcade oh, era. Yeah, yeah. And it's a one night, and it was magical and legendary, and everyone loved it. And it went 10-9, last fight. Like, it, it couldn't have That's gone perfect. any better. Who wrote better. the script? Give him a raise. <laughs> exactly. It couldn't have gone any better, man. And I just want to thank Texas for coming out and showing that they definitely aren't free. We held it down. New York, what's up? And uh, a lot of other scenes are wanting to do this. Like, it created something. 
Absolutely. And, and that's what I love the most. I just want to bring the hype, bring the content, and hope people love it, man. It was fantastic from start to finish. Texas sucks. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, look, I was glad to be, like, part of it. I'm, I was glad to be front row. That, that, I've never seen anything like that in a long, long time. Maybe, like, it's been, like, a decade since I've seen that type of energy. We and, need more of this. And that type of, vi- like, vibrant energy in that room. Uh, thank God for saying that up. You and Omnis did a great job with that, man. For sure. Yeah, we loved it, man. We just we just want the hype, man. The heart, the heart is still real in a few of us, man. So if we can spread that, especially with MK11 coming, there's a lot of new viewers. There's mm-hmm. people who don't even know I do commentary, or there's people who who aren't familiar with some of like the legend legacy names we had on the team for both sides. And now they're getting introduced to this world. Like, damn, okay, this is what they do in Mortal Kombat. And then on top of it, the tournament itself was amazing. Then you have people who don't even watch MK like tuned in. Like, well, damn! I need to follow this guy, and and hopefully all that does is spread awareness and visibility to these wonderful players, the wonderful scene, the wonderful events, and all mm-hmm. of the content, man. If you're watching here from Florida versus Texas, make sure y'all give them a follow and holler at them because these are my friends. And Canada's got like two, you know, they got a little squad. But yeah. you guys will have to put the whole country together, and I understand <laughs> that. But you know. Yeah, oh, we'll yeah, squad up, bro. baby. We'll squad we, we up. We might need to holler at Canada, too. Uh, DreamHack Montreal is on the uh, Mortal Kombat Pro competition, so if Canada can put 10 together, I'm just saying uh, we can have that discussion. Hey, maybe, well. may, maybe, man. We can keep this going all day, though, but KP, I got to let you go. Unfortunately, uh, for now, we'll, we'll hit you up later, but we appreciate you dropping in here, and thanks for talking MK11, dude. No, man, thanks for having me, man. Canada forever. I wish I had a little flag. (laughs) (laughs) Well, anyways, there was more than just MK11 at Combo Breaker. There's so much else to catch up on. So let's check out some highlights from the rest of the weekend. It's gonna be big damage. It's gonna be okay. I'm getting heart attack. He's got full meter. Need to get a touch. Oh! Let's go! 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 Let's go
I'll play him because their characters have either gotten nerfed or they're not really catered to okay. that new meta, that heavy neutral style, which is, by the way, fantastic and beautiful to watch. For example, each time somebody hit a button, yeah. he hit, he slapped them out of the face and made sure that they got punished for even trying to, to do attempt anything. to make contact with them. So it, it's really incredible play from, from Punk itself. I think we're gonna, we're, we're on pace to see something super legendary yeah. this season. Well, I, I'm wondering then, like, if players are going to be able to figure this out. You said that they're playing to, like, his play style, but someone's, is it just the characters? Like, do people have to switch characters? I mean, like, he went pretty close with Problem X, right? Like, these guys were exchanging three L's back and forth. Like, is it, can Problem X, like, pick up a, a character and just do well, or does he have to change his entire play style? I, now? I actually don't think he has to change his entire play style. Mm -hmm. I think the way okay. he's playing is, is, is great. I think he just has to also... He has to keep up with the level of play that Punk mm. is uh, projecting towards him. And uh, the a main issue that he's having right now is that his character Bison is, it might be like a character that can help him win evil, yeah. but against Punk is very difficult because uh, Karen does a lot of what Bison does, but yeah. much better, and she's a much faster and mobile character. So he's having difficulty finding a new character to help counter the speed, the mobility, of Karen, but you saw that with his Abigail pick, yeah. he managed a 3 old Punk. But after that, Punk adjusted by changing his V trigger yeah. to make uh, to make Problem X feel like I can't really whiff buttons, I can't really go wild on on Punk. I have to really, really play a clean game, and I can't play clean with Abigail against them. Mm -hmm. And that's why he got reverse 3 old in the second set in the grand. Well, let's give some coaching lessons, to Problem X, right now, because like we get, we want to see him eventually try to take it. I can't you know, coach too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like what, like what exactly do you think is just going to be a switch? Do, does he have to switch to the characters that, that Punk's using, or is it there's no way that his characters are going to be able to do what what well, he needs? Like Bison's not going to be able to do this at all. Me personally, I feel like he he's having difficulty finding a new character. Like I said, he's uncomfortable with the entire rest of the characters. He's been trying mm -hmm. to find a second one, but I feel like he himself has to elevate his level of play uh, with his characters and use that his character's limitations and build mm -hmm. upon its strength. And unfortunately, like he's gonna he's still gonna have an amazing season. He's top three yeah, in the yeah, leaderboard yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. But you know you know he's gunning for punk. But, but, he, but right. he's gunning for punk absolutely. And it's gonna be he has to elevate his level of play if he can't choose a different character. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's something I would love to see how he would evolve as a player. That's cool. Because like he's fantastic, right? He's a top three player in the world. Every time he enters a bracket, I'm always scared to to see him like nuke my bracket, mm -hmm. right? Nuke my fantasy bracket. So it's like it's kind of like I, I hope that the next level he achieves completely changes the way people play Bison. That, that'd be sick. I mean, I love seeing those meta shifts too, but that, that just this sets up a really good story for the future, right? Absolutely. But the, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now, so we got we got to talk to um, about Daigo specifically, yo, because he's running in with the hitbox, right? And that's getting that's banned now. Uh, no, no, no. So Is it not? Here's the issue. The, okay, what's going on? There's a specific hitbox that he wants to use during the tournament. Okay. It's by another player named Gafro, a Japanese player named yeah. Gafro. Now, the issue with this hitbox is that. Uh, there's something called SOCD cleaners. SOCD cleaners are are something that allows you to have multiple inputs inputted and it'll give priority to one. It follows so, a logic per se. So, oh, so it's kind of like a macro that'll pick the best option essentially? Abs uh, it, will, it will pick a logical option, okay. not the best option per se. So most fighting games, for example, Street Fighter 4 handled this really well, yeah. Tekken handles this really well, but unfortunately Street Fighter 5 doesn't handle this well. And when people found out that he was able to basically hold charge every time he moved forward as Guile, he was, you, that, those sonic booms came out of a pace much faster than it was intended or built yeah, in the yeah, game. Yeah. And so what happened was they were like, no, this is cheap, we gotta ban it. But Hitbox yeah. itself is oh, not it's banned. Fine. It's okay. just his Hitbox. The hit, his Hitbox that, was, that he was using yeah, that, that I, I'll give my opinion. I, I kind of agree with this, but how do you feel about this? You, you're like, okay, yeah, that one specifically, keep it out. Because like that does seem a little OP. I, it, it, I feel like we need more strict regulations in terms of controllers. <laughs> yeah. And that we need to get them actually all tested. For example, that 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 hitbox was used last year yeah. in the Pro Tour by by the same player, Gafro, that gave him that hitbox. Uh, Daigo was trying to like just trying to pass it on, make sure that if this guy got through with it last year, maybe I can use it too to yeah, get that competitive yeah, yeah. advantage. And I feel like that's a, that's, that's a part that Capcom kind of overlooked in a way, but how would they know? Gaffro was not a good player. Well, that yeah, that yeah, guy yeah, was yeah. drowning in pools. But unfortunately, when you give a, to a, a good strong guy tool, that knows how to use it. Yeah, a tool to a god named Daigo, <laughs> yeah. that dude's definitely gonna wipe the competition, right? Yeah, so that's it's true. kind of it's kind of difficult. Yeah, that is that is interesting. Yeah, maybe they need like a list of like approved controllers that's tested. You're right. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, but, we'll just test them a little more. But I, I really they did 
what Capcom and Combo Breaker did fantastic mm -hmm. was they, they reacted to this situation very quickly and they said, That's no, good. no, we are not letting Guile act like Street Fighter 2 Sagat. Mm -hmm. We are not. That, is, that breaks the comp spirit of competition. Yeah, yeah. And they managed to irk that out super quick. Yeah. All right. Let's quickly uh, jump over to talk about Tekken because that was going on. <laughs> he knows what's up. Yo, me's back. Nee? Right? Oh no, Nee was, look, Nee never left. Him getting top three <laughs> is considered a problem. That's how you know he never left. This, <laughs> yeah. this dude came from losers, man. This dude came from losers and smacked everybody up. It was a OD. He went on that tear roll. Yo, can you just break it down then? Like, to, let, talk about the grand finals then uh, with Anakin. Then, yo, break it down. Like, okay, so here's how what you, How you take out Nee? Nee, look, Nee, Tekken is a game where you have to play heavy, like I said, heavy neutral. Yeah. It is like, it is an art. It's like fencing. At a high level, yeah. but with like crazy movement. Yeah, not and with so, little swords. They got, big, little, they got big swords. With, with big fists and big swords <laughs> and fireballs. Sometimes if you have a kuma, and pandas here and there. But uh, what Nee did, Nee. So in Tekken, you have high, low, and medium, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and how he managed to mix up his his ability to make contact with his uh, opponent super well. Anakin at some point didn't know how to block, yeah. Nee, especially in, especially in the clutch rounds where Anakin was about to win the tournament. And he managed to mix up his options from high, mid, and low so well that I couldn't get a read on him. Yeah, the yeah, guy beside like, me, going on? the guy beside me, shouts to AJ from Echo Fox. <laughs> he didn't know how to do it. Like he, did, he was like, "What's going on?" And it, it was just a display of mastery. It was a display of movement, and it was like watching Floyd Mayweather at his prime yeah, fighting yeah, yeah, against yeah. Shane Mosley. It's, like, it's so it's, looking forward to Tekken right now. Is is anybody close? Or do you expect Nee to keep this terror going? No, I, I actually think this is uh Nee's not gonna keep this terror going. Oh, okay. Because there's a there's a Tekken god in Pakistan named Arsen Slash. Okay. That guy that guy is fantastic. All right. And in Pakistan, Tekken is the most played esport there. Yeah, yeah. And their level of competition, that's like 30 billion, 30 million people playing the game. I Their level of competition is fantastic. Yeah. So I feel like maybe Arsen Slash has an answer for okay. it. Okay. Maybe Chanel has an answer for it. Or maybe maybe Anakin will level up from this experience because yeah, let's face true. it, Anakin had to be like three or four more Korean players to make it there, right? That, that's not easy. Yeah, he beat Chanel. <laughs> he beat Chanel, who was playing uh, a lot, I believe, Eliza. It was like it was so hard for him to do that, but he managed to do that. So I don't think I don't think this is something. I don't think this is the start of a dominant run. Yeah. I just think that we just saw the greatest of all time. Level up to his name. Just level up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's sick. Yo, I'm hype on Tekken now. I can't I'm, wait. But I'm absolutely yeah, hype on Tekken. I know, I heard. All right, we got, we got to break down though, over this weekend. Like, there was there was so much great things that happened at Combo Breaker. But we got to talk about our player of the week. Yo, can you hit me with one? No, I can't hit you with one okay. because there's so much talented players that, that that came through this weekend. I got to give it to three. Okay, yeah, three. later. later. One for each game. One is Scar. Scar yeah, managed to yeah. prove to everybody why he was considered number two in MKX. He, he managed to beat... A hot Sonic Fox, yeah. super hot Sonic Fox. After Sonic Fox beat Samich, he was going in on everybody, except for Scar. Scar stopped the greatest player of all time. Yeah, and Sonic he's got momentum too when you stopping that guy. He was, yo, he was like a snowball. It was like yeah. an avalanche, dude. Someone yodeled in the mountains and it was like, <laughs> you're gonna die, right? But, it's all coming down. But Scar stopped that avalanche. Uh, the second player I would give it to is actually Machabo in Street Fighter V. All right. He managed to change everybody's perception of Nikali. Nikali is a character that's never ever been used uh, since season three, yeah. And it's season four now. And now that now that we see how strong uh, Nikali can be, Machabo outplayed almost everybody to get third. And it was some fantastic, fantastic play. Obviously, you're not going to beat Punk yeah. with that character. Karen just. But it's still, when you see someone doing work with a character, it, it makes you perk up a bit. And, yeah, and it, look, it, right? it definitely changed my perspective yeah, yeah, of that yeah. match. And number three, I definitely have to go to. Anakin. Anakin was a hometown hero, mm. and unfortunately he couldn't take out the greatest of all time, but he managed to take out other great players too. He managed to take out Rang Chu. Rang Chu was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's he going managed on? to take out <laughs> Chanel too, and ah, fantastic player, dude. I can't wait to see him this weekend. He's fantastic. Yeah, well, there you have it. Another combo breaker in the books. A big thanks, of course, to Katana Prime for calling in today, and tomorrow is Rocket League Day as Nick and myself are chatting the RLCS promo tournament. Until then, check out all our socials at Squad State. We'll see you tomorrow.